Hi Shams, my name is Tando um, Noganda and I am a data scientist slash quant slash actuarial analyst and I am going to be journaling or sharing my journey, how I came to be and how I'm doing and what I do uh, on this channel in this particular playlist. So come along. Subscribe, like, share, and all of those cute things. So, just um, a few things about me. I am an avid chess player. I recently, like, really immersed myself into the gym, which is why I'm wearing, like, a tank top. It's all I wear now. Tank tops and shorts. Um, because what's the point of gym gaze if you can't show them? And professionally, I'm a quantitative analyst um, at a bank, well, at the insurance leg of a bank, and that's what I do. So I'm going to start at the very beginning, if I may. I matriculated from Western High in 2012. I did really well in my trial exams, but I didn't do so well in my final exams. And I'd applied to two and a half universities. Let me explain uh, what I mean by that. I applied to Stellenbosch, I'd applied to UCT, and I'd applied to WITS, right? But I didn't have enough money to finish my WITS application. So I sort of left that, and then, because I think WITS was a 300 in my year, and then Skelly's was a 100, and UCT was 100, and I was paying for everything myself, right? And I just, for me it was like, I can't put all my money in a VITS application and then just basically put all my eggs in my basket, in the same basket. So what I ended up doing is I applied for VITS, well sorry, I applied for UCT and Stellenbosch, which is 100 rand each, and I got into both. And the funny thing is, when I got to UCT, I actually still had, you know, emails and communications from the university asking me to finish my application um, by paying, right, so that they could look at everything and evaluate it fully. And I really wanted to come to Vids. Actually, I don't want to go to Vids per se. I wanted to go to Joburg, right? So coming from the Eastern Cape, Joburg was a thing. I mean, I also wanted to apply to UJ for accounting. Um, but UJ, I think to apply for res in my year was about 800 and I didn't have that, right? And I couldn't optimize or, or do anything to my budget to make that come into fruition. And the reason I mentioned that is that like, I know that nowadays a lot of the undergrad applications are free and like, I'm so grateful for that because coming from where I come from, I would have really, you know, appreciated that, um, so it means that the universities have sort of seen that those those application fees deter certain students and just adds to the barriers to entry to tertiary education and they've done something about that and I'm so happy for that because I'm not one of those people that are like if you struggle oh sorry if I struggle then you must also struggle no 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 I genuinely believe that people that come after me should have it easier than what I had and that I should have it easier than people before me and like I try my utmost best to do that and that's like one of the things that I'm trying to address with this channel right okay so get into UCT I get into Stellenbosch 2013 but I got in for my second option now because I didn't get the A in math I got 78 and then I remarked and then I got 79 and UCT was like 80 percent and so was Stellies so I get in for maths and stats at both. I chose UCT because I didn't want that English of accounts barrier. Um, but what UCT had said was, if you do well in first year, then in 2014, you can start with AppSci. And Stelis was like, if you do well in the first six months, then in July, you can start with AppSci. And then I was like, okay, both are compelling. I can still do what I want. And then I just, yeah, I opted for UCT. Funny enough, I think, <laughs> UCT started on the 29th of January, 2013, or 30th of January. And Stellenbosch started on the 22nd of January. And I'd already like told my mom and my aunt, okay, I'm going to Stellenbosch. Oh, sorry, I'm going to UCT. 
but I had so much FOMO because I went to school at Bay, so Kubeha, which was you know Port Elizabeth at the time, and a lot of the the, the, the like uh, the high school people that I went to school with went to NMMU, which is now NMU. I'm showing my age, and they had opened like I think on the 15th of January. So you have all of these people that you went to high school with taking pictures and posting on socials um, about their university experience and you're just sitting at home. I have to sit at home for like two weeks. So I remember I think on the 20th or 21st of January, I was like to my mom, look, I think I want to go to Stelly's. Because Stelly's, I don't know if they open on the 22nd or what, but they called me in for a computer class. I think, yeah, that started on the 22nd of January. So like I changed my mind and I was like, okay, I want to go to Stellenbosch now. Um, only because it was starting a week earlier than UCT and I had FOMO and I didn't want to wait. I wanted to go to university. And my mom was like, that's not what we discussed. You're going to stick to what we discussed. We haven't prepared for you, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, I was like, okay, cool. So that's how I got to UCT. Um, I think I'm going to make this part one. But I also want to touch on how I decided on electrical science. So I initially wanted to be a civil engineer, right? I was good at math, I was good at physics, I was good at, you know, I did physics, I did information technology, I did uh, accounting, right? So that's the thing I loved about my school, which was Western High, is that they didn't box you in, right? You could sort of pick as long as the timetable allowed you. So I didn't have like a commerce stream or physics stream and I wanted civil engineering because Oricon, I think they came to my school or it was some classes I was attending at NMMU where Oricon presented. And basically Oricon was telling us about they had bursaries and they had offices in Dubai and obviously like as a 17 or 16 year old, I like I was very forward thinking. I've always been a bit of a planner. And like my thinking was, okay, I am going to study civil engineering for four years on bursary and then I'm gonna to go to Dubai for four years to work back, you know, the Oricon bursary. Like I had my eight to ten year plan. And then in twenty twelve, right? So twenty twelve comes along and all I know is that I don't wanna be in Port Elizabeth, right? I don't have like the greatest uh, living conditions and I that's part of the reason why I didn't apply for any new you for accounting. Um, simply because NMMU at the time, I don't know what it looks like now, but they didn't consider you for res and if you were from Port Elizabeth, right? So I just, I didn't want that. You understand what I mean? So I was like, okay, no to NMMU. Um, but I was like, I need to live, leave. Like, I just want to leave the province. And then I knew that, you know, the program that I landed on, which was actual science, was available in UP. Stellenbosch, Wits, and UCT, and I found all of this out through Sard P for one, and two, my library, my school library, right? And I think Sard P comes in in 2012, right? So I'm in matric. I think it was early on in the year. So one of my teachers comes in and makes an announcement that the Sard P organization is basically looking for uh, the top top two matriculants and top two grade 11 students to present to. I was like, okay. Uh, they were presenting at Lingside High, which is a neighboring high school. And my thinking was, okay, I don't really care for it because I didn't know what they were about. But t let me tell you what, what attracted me. One, it was gonna be during school hours. So I was like, okay, cool, I can miss some school. Two, it was gonna be at Lingside High and I've never been inside Lingside. And I wanted to go. And number three, obviously, because I've always been like a high achiever, I wanted to go see other high achievers. So if they had said they wanted to chat to, you know, any grade level or any matriculant, I might have been like, mm -mm. but like because they said the top two matriculants and top two grade elevens, my thinking was I'm gonna get there and then I can show off my badges, right? So I have academic honor, academic colors. And I had a scroll for, I think, chess. I had a scroll for academics. I had a scroll because I was a prefect for leadership. Uh, I had a scroll for culture because I was the editor of the school newsletter, The Westringer. And in our year, uh, myself and the deputy uh, uh, 
editor, which was Simone, we managed to get the we managed to get enough sponsors to get the, the school newsletter printed in color, right? So that was a first in our year. So I was quite accomplished and you know when you're accomplished and you meet like other accomplished people, it's always like, mmm, head girl, mmm, head boy, mmm. You play chess as well? You understand what I mean? So that's what I wanted. I wanted that networking, etc. Oh, well, at the time, I didn't know that's what it was. Fine, so I put up my hand, me and a gent named Tan Luit in my class. Uh, he ended up actually doing um, civil engineering at Stellenbosch. And then a girl, uh, Chelsea, so she actually ended up doing actual science also at Stellenbosch, right? The following year, she was a grade 11. And Tan Luit and I were the trick. So we go out, they take us during school hours, we go to Linkside and Sod Key presents. I remember, I think it was, no, 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 Key, what was it? I forget her name. It starts with an N-O, but in Kize, no Z, from Kize. Anyway, the head of Sod P is there presenting and she hands us these envelopes at the end. Like basically an info pack about Sod P, the bursary. And all she's basically saying is, it's prestigious, the, it's a lucrative career, um, there are very few black professionals that, that start and finish it. And I came out of there pumped, right? Because I'm sitting amongst people with these like blazers full of badges and I'm being told I can make lots of money. I was like, okay, this is it, this is it. Let me tell you, when, when UCT opened up their applications and Stellenbosch and Vits, I did not apply for civil engineering anyway. All I saw, all I applied for was actuarial science, and then I did my research, and I knew that there's a lot of math and stats in in the degree. So definitely, I needed to do. Definitely, I needed to do what is this? I needed to do. Um, I needed to do math and stats as my second option, which is why that's what I picked. And I think around the same time, I picked up paper three, maths paper three. Uh, which is the lowest mark on my, my transcript, or not transcript, what is it, maybe it's my NSC, National Certificate Certificate. I think I got 53 for that. It was, I only picked it up like in 2012, and it was sort of self-taught, um, and probability is quite difficult, right? Especially if you haven't done it from grade 11 onwards. Uh, but we had a maths teacher that was offering it, and then you had to pay for the classes, and I was paying it out of my own money. So it was a bit challenging for me, but I passed it. I mean, I got 53 for something that I picked up like two months into the year. So I, I was quite happy about that. But I, I knew that I wanted it because from the side P chat, they had said that it's, it's, it's recommended. Um, if, you, if, you, if you're taking, if you think of taking a actual science, then it's recommended that you take maths paper three. And I think I'm gonna end the video here. This is my first part. And then I can talk to you guys about like, how my dad and I drove to Cape Town, how I settled in, how I struggled to get Erez, um, the friends I made, and all of those cute things. And like, it was my first time out of the province. Oh my, oh. Like, I think I've left Cape Town now in Joburg, but like, those first few years were undoubtedly the best years of my life. And they made me, I think, who I am. Because at 17, 18, you think you know everything, right? And it's not even academic, it's just life-wise. You think you have it all figured out, etc., etc. And then I got to UCT and I came across girls um, that had the same mindset as me, that found my jokes funny, that read, that understood irony, that enjoyed board games. And like, I was so happy in res. Um, I was in Grasha, by the way, hi all Grashians, I think they call them now, but we used to be called first ladies. And I absolutely, like, I, I think I thrived in that type of environment. Um, I didn't feel other, it felt very inclusive, it felt like, it felt like all the years, all the 18 years before that were just preparing me for that. It felt bigger than, you know, East London, which is where my family is from bigger than Port Elizabeth, which is where I went to school. And it's funny because I probably just stayed in the southern suburbs for the first three years, right? Because I just, I didn't know anything outside of that. But like, it still felt so much bigger. Funny story, um, before I cap this, this video, but like, in, 
2013, three things, right? They ask you during orientation. Um, everyone that you come across. What's your name? Where are you from? And what are you studying? So I meet a girl, I can't remember what she was studying, um, but she was from Nigeria, right? So also a fresher, Nigeria. So we get to chatting and I don't know, I think we're probably catching a jam together. So she asks me three, what's your name, where are you from? What are you studying? Okay, I tell her I'm Tando, I'm from East London and I'm studying maths and stats, BSc maths and stats. And she's like, oh cool, you're from London. And I was like, oh, no, East London in the Eastern Cape in South Africa. And like, <laughs> I will never forget that because for me, it just spoke to the cosmopolitan nature of UCT and other universities, I'm assuming. But for me to come across someone and for me to say I'm from East London and for them to assume it's London, London, because that's something that literally could happen. Like you came across people from different worlds and different pockets of the world. I mean, she was from Nigeria. Um, and so it was plausible that I was from East London, like in the UK, if you understand what I mean. And I really, I think I blossomed in that type of environment because although I haven't traveled the world, like I still haven't been outside South Africa, my passport is here, but like it doesn't have any stamps on it. Um, I think university opened up my mind in a way that travel um, could have or will still not that like there's still odd pockets in my mind that can be open it's just that university did that for me so much earlier on when I know that I couldn't afford it at the time and like that is something that I will be forever grateful for and I think that's just what tertiary education does it, it, it opens up your mind because of the interactions that you have with people that think differently that see things differently that have experienced different things and I will be forever grateful to Dr. Max Price for that. All right, thank you. Check out my next video where I will detail my drive to UCT and how I found my way in the first couple of days, months, and everything. Thanks.